Good Morning Research Medical Center. I'm Julie Philbeck, the Chief Nursing Officer. Today I'm joined by three of my colleagues, Assistant Chief Nursing Officer Sophia Solomon, our CNC from 3 Central, Jamie Baumgartner, and our other Assistant Chief Nursing Officer, Lindsay Goldhammer. Today we are here because we really want to talk about an important subject. That subject is health. It has been no secret that the last couple of years have been incredibly difficult, not just professionally, but personally, mentally, physically, all of the above. Yet through all of this, I think every one of us would say that we see you. We see you showing up every day, even when it is most difficult. And today we wanna to talk a little bit about some of those experiences that we've seen not only helping others in the community, but also how we see you helping each other. Jamie, I'd like to start a little bit with you. So this last September, you had an opportunity to go to one of our sister facilities and help them out. Can you share a little bit about your experience? We were team C, so what we did is we relieved the team that had been staying there. Um, so we were able to relieve the staff so that they could go home and be with their families. So once we got there, we were given a short orientation and then we just started working. So worked and slept and gave a chance for those employees that had been in lockdown during the hurricane, gave them, gave them a chance to go home to be with their families and take care of matters that, had, that they had experienced. You know, I had a chance to talk with one of the chief nursing officers who received help from our nurses here at Kansas City. And you know, it really is, when you think about the power of that help, probably doesn't seem like a lot to us to go down there for a week or two and work. Yet, as I was talking to her, she really expressed to me that those nurses through lockdown, some of them lost power at their homes, didn't have connection with their family members, didn't even know if their homes were standing until they finally left the facility. So while it may not always feel like a lot for us, for those receiving the help, it was more than they can ever express from a thank you perspective. Yeah. That's great. Right. I, I, I had worked with a nurse there that um, she had had her home destroyed during Hurricane Katrina and she was actually on Team B. So um, when we got there, she was able to go home and she was um, she had had destruction of her house again. So um, it was they all were very thankful. I mean, even the patients, patients and all the staff are very them, thankful that we were there and you know they they all were so resilient and um, you know they worried about us being there right. coming down to help us when they had all the world of worries on their hands but they were they were very grateful for us it's great and it thank was you. and it was a pleasure to help them as well thank you jamie i appreciate your sharing your story with us yes I'd like to take a minute now and maybe shift our focus of, of help, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the great things about being part of a company like HCA is that we can um, be part of something much bigger when areas are in need of help. But these last couple of months, I think we would all say have been incredibly difficult, right? Um, we talk about the COVID surge, we talk about the numbers, we cared for more COVID patients in our community than we have during any of the other surges, right? And through that, I feel like our teams continue to rise, right? They continue to show up, they continue to support each other in so many different ways. So Sophia, would you share a little bit about one of your experiences that you felt during this time and how you show, saw our team members continue to show up? Well, there are a few things and our physical therapy, our OTs, our speech therapists who gave their time they would actually, after their shift, would pick up extra hours. They help the unit so much because we know that anything that you can do to touch that patient makes a difference. So they would go to the units, they would help ambulate our patients, they would help feed the patients. Um, they would help actually just with the moving and transitioning because we know that at times that with nursing care, it's not. A, it's never about just giving medications or right. or uh, actually it's changing dressings. It is really that that touch that they need. Yeah. And so when the nurses saw that, they were just so thankful. We heard over and over again that our therapy department showed up for us, and I think mm -hmm. that's something that they would never forget. Yeah. Yes. You know, I love that because I would. There were days I would be in the house supervisor office when they would come. Mm -hmm. The units would literally <laughs> fight over which yeah. that, that who got PT and OT help yep. for that day. It was right, so great. Right. It so, was amazing. It was that. amazing. And also, our team showed up in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually had a situation mm -hmm. on one of our units where 
we had a family member actually called and insisted to speak to the husband. Yeah. It was late at night and normally once our patients go to sleep, you know, we like to yeah. let them rest because Absolutely. of course they don't get a lot of rest here in the hospital. And so it was the compassionate listening of those team members yeah. that they realized that this wife was in trouble, that this spouse was in trouble to the point that we actually found out that she was suicidal. And in that moment, when they took that time to just listen to her needs, understand that no matter what else is going on around us, we have to stop and know that our patients are not only the ones that are in the bed, right. but their family members and everyone else. So in this situation, they were able to identify that this spouse needed help. They were able, able to call 911 and they actually were instrumental in preventing her from doing any self-harm. So it's this type of love and compassion, and we call it really, you know, loving kindness and joy of what we do. So no matter what the situation is, no matter if it's COVID, um, you know, you may not have everything you need as far as every nurse you want to work at that particular time, but when you can really say, this is my calling, I do this because I care for all people, they really showed that in that situation. That's passion for the profession, no mm -hmm. matter what. Truly meant, truly yes, meant to be here. Yes. So grateful for that, mm -hmm. Lindsay. I want to I want to shift to you for just a minute. So, I, I know that obviously you've been here now just a little over six months, um, and certainly seen some of the two uh, biggest surges we've had mm -hmm. through COVID. Would you share a little bit with me about maybe some of your experiences in your time here? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most impactful experiences that I've had so far here is. Um, learning about the DMAT team, um, yeah. that entire process and how they can show up and assist us in a time of need. Yeah. Um, I think that we've talked a lot about um, being a hero hospital and how much we've sacrificed and we've done. Um, but when we look at that DMAT team, I think it was an absolute relief that we received some of that yeah. um, help. So um, when they showed up the first time to watch the ancillary departments come together, EVS, food and nutrition, um, getting an entire unit up and going in no the matter of, I think it was three days is all we had um, to figure out all of the processes to make this successful was phenomenal to watch. Um, and the nurses jumped right in and um, it didn't matter. It didn't matter where this nurse came from. They were by their side. I'll help you. I'm going to show you processes. Um, so many charge nurses volunteered to go work in that unit solely to help them um, and grow them through this process. So that was really amazing. Um, and then when we were talking about getting a DMAT reload mm -hmm. and not knowing if that was going to be possible or not, um, we were in the height of, I think one day I was sitting in the house supervisor's office and we had 24 call-ins and I think 22 of them were COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was just a very difficult and scary time to not know every single day how you were going to take care of patients. Yeah. So um, when we were talking about a reload, um, we actually received help from um, our entire community, the MARC yep. organization, yep. to speak on our behalf and say That's that right. this was absolutely necessary for our community because we do so much for all of our outreach hospitals. Yeah. And I found that to be pretty amazing that they would speak on our behalf to get us help and they mm -hmm. sure did. Um, so that second reload when the DMAT team came, um, it was almost like we were so grateful to receive that help. We wanted it to be even better the second time than <laughs> yes, it was the first yes. time for them. <laughs> and so um, to watch everybody really nitpick and fine tune how we did this process and got them in the door so quickly and yeah. made it successful for them, um, really made it successful for our teams as well too. Yeah. And they felt supported. So um, one of the most humbling experiences to see people leave their families, yeah. come here and help people for the sake of helping right. people that they don't even know. So yeah, for 14 um, days straight, I mean, they came mm -hmm. and uh, literally from the, the time they hit the ground here to the time they left, they were working yes. 12 hour shifts. You yes. know, and I think what was really great when you talk about that three West and how the DMAT team supported that, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to when I think about all of our outpatient nurses, right? Yes. When we had to slow our elective mm -hmm. procedures yes. and the amount of GI nurses that came up and, and helped out yes. were resource nurses flipped to night shift. We had nurses from outpatient West, um, from radiology, et cetera, that all came and were more than willing to say, how can I help? Mm -hmm. How can I help? How can I be different? Because this is where I need to be. So yes. Julie, great. it was one thing with the DMAT team that I thought about um, when Lindsay was talking that we only had I think it was four or five nurses. Mm -hmm. And for some, mm -hmm. you know, you may say, well, that's not a lot, you know, but it was, <laughs> it, it was, was just enough. enough. 
And so, um, it, like you said, it really touched us just to see how a few nurses, a few paramedics made such a difference for, for our anyone, team. Yeah, for yeah. anyone questioning, mm -hmm. if you can make a difference as one person, I think that showed. Um, yeah. They said four nurses and one nurse. Yes. One nurse in a shift <laughs> oh, yeah. changes the entire we dynamics of the hospital. <laughs> yes, it does. So every single person who yes, that. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Lindsay. You know, I do wanna, um, you know, Jamie, I wanna come back to you because I think I know I put this call out um, a little while ago, it's been a couple months now, and you and several of your team members really stepped up to the plate. We actually have a nurse in our community, she's a school nurse now, mm -hmm. but came from Research Medical Center, and she works at um, one of our local middle schools, um, truly an underserved population, and children that are in need of just basic help. Can you share with me a little bit about how you and your team members um, sort of rose to that occasion and supported that team? And we loved doing this. Yeah. By the way, this was such a great idea. Yeah. Um, what we did, um, we have a group me, so we yeah. just um, reached out and asked if anybody wanted to donate any hygiene items mm -hmm. for middle schoolers. So um, deodorant, shampoo, um, the, what, whatever that you name yeah. it. Um, if they would like to bring it in, so we can make hygiene backpacks mm -hmm. for these middle schoolers. So within, I think that was a Friday. Within three days, um, we had so many items brought in. Volunteers brought in backpacks and then they brought in different hygiene products. So we put together 26 hygiene backpacks. We had them separated for boys and girls. And then um, so that our um, team put them together and then went and delivered them to that middle school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I think through all of this in the, in the global pandemic, right? It's, um, it's, it's important to recognize that our communities are suffering around us. And mm -hmm. while they may not be seeking help inside our walls of mm -hmm. an organization, they still need our help just the same. And simple things like that may seem so simple to us, mm -hmm. um, but for some of those children, literally not having access to toothbrushes and mm -hmm. toothpaste, it makes all the difference in the world. So yes, I appreciate that. that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that was a great idea. You know, there's there's two shout outs I really wanna give mm -hmm. um, that have really spoken to me. And um, one was just last week. Mm -hmm. So um, I know uh, Thursday was an interesting day last week, right? <laughs> um, winter storm, yes. we, we had a lot of snow. Getting here was interesting, certainly took some extra time. I think everybody is very aware of um, the, the population that we serve. And at times we can have a very high volume of our homeless patients, mm -hmm. in particular on days like that who are seeking shelter. Um, and you know, one of the things I saw from our ER staff was nurses who weren't even here for the day were reaching out to their nurses who were working, their colleagues who were working and said, hey, I just want you to know these are the shelters that I see that I know are making sure they can keep our, our homeless population safe during this winter storm. And, and again, I'm sure for them, that is just something they do on a natural daily basis, but that speaks to the care and that compassion mm -hmm. that you're talking about in terms of showing up for our communities on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I, I was really touched by that. You know, but I think- To add on to yeah. that, we have a nurse um, actually on our floor and she knits hats for the homeless. Oh. So oh. Um, it's Atty. So <laughs> yeah, um, yep. so she knits hats um, and do donate them to our local shelters. There's so That's many beautiful. examples yeah. across our organization of, of people really rising up, you know? I think one of the, the departments that really has been um, impacted, I think from the mental and physical exhaustion of COVID has certainly been our critical care units, right? Um, and some of the death and devastation that they have seen through all of these surges. One of the stories I, I really wanna share with this group and with everyone is um, one of our long-term young ECMO patients who I think most of us um, throughout the organization um, all departments were really connected to, right? He'd been here so long, he was so young, two young children, and unfortunately um, did not have the outcome that we wanted. And it was a very difficult day. Um, I know for those teams when the family made that decision that it was um, a time to remove the ECMO. And like within an instant, um, I saw that team rise up, mm -hmm. right? They showed up and they put out a request for funds. Um, we really want to support the family. Um, they all wrote in a journal the stories of um, their interactions and how much that family meant to them um, throughout that journey to provide that to his wife. Um, they made um, packages for the two children um, to remind them who their dad was and how much he was loved and then raised over $600 to be able to give that to the family to help 
his wife and children as they now have to live without him. And, you know, and it's, again, no question, no hesitation. They showed up, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think about the work that we do here at Research Medical Center, and certainly there is work within these four walls every day that I see that makes me proud to work here. Mm -hmm. um, but it is the other stuff that you don't see that mm -hmm. I think sometimes speaks volumes about our colleagues and how proud I am to be here and of the teams that we work to serve. So, yes. well, thank you all. Thank you, thank you yeah, for the conversation you. today. <laughs> um, thank you for the time to, to recognize our team members. Yes. You know, there's been so much um, that has occurred over these last couple of years. And by no means do I think that we're uh, fully be past um, our, uh, our COVID times. We know that this will be here forever. But no matter what, I know that there is no other organization I would rather be at right. and no other team members I would rather work with. So right. I appreciate you, all of you Research Medical Center. Thank you ladies for your time Thank today. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.